Hey, it's Jen Lewis. You're listening to Smart Keto Academy, podcast episode number three. Welcome to Smart Keto Academy podcast. I'm your host, Jen Lewis, where I teach you the only smart and strategic lifestyle for women over 40. Real coaching, real strategies, real success. This is Smart Keto Academy. Hey friends, welcome back. If you're a new listener, we are so glad to have you here. And if you're one of my returning buddies, thank you so much for being here. I look forward to serving you. So what is on topic today? Today's episode is a really good one. I get asked so often, what keto the right way looks like? What does it mean to me? And so I thought, hey, Let's go ahead and cover that over on the podcast so you can all benefit from it. First, though, I want you to get the most out of our time together. As a holistic weight loss and integrative nutrition coach, I believe in the body as a whole, our mind, body, spirit. When in alignment, we experience optimal wellness. And so that is my goal for you. It is really important to bring an intention to our time together. And I would like to help you do that. So if you can think about setting an intention for yourself during this time, what is one reason that you are interested in doing keto the right way, the smart keto academy way? What do you hope to get from it? What do you think is missing from other keto programs or what you see your friends doing? What do you think is missing? I really want you to really think about that. And I want you to really set the intention and what's the one thing you want to take away from our time together. My intention for you is that you gain a clear understanding of what true wellness looks like and how you can achieve it. I get asked what keto is. What what does doing keto the right way mean to me? And in order for me to share that, I need to take you back. It's been over a decade ago. It was probably, I want to say, 12 years ago. I was in a very desperate situation. I was struggling in life. I had young children. I had a thriving career. I was, I was newly married and I had a lot going on. But I was desperate to lose weight. And it felt like every single thing that I did was not working. I tried everything. Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers. Um, gosh, what else did I try? There was, there was literally so many things. Hiring a personal trainer, uh, training for a marathon. I mean, you name it. And I was trying it. And I would go back and forth to my doctor and be like, something is wrong with me. I'm doing everything right. And this weight is not budging. Okay, just to paint a picture for you. It was a I was just, I was in a place of I just I just needed something to work. I was in a state of almost desperation. And so what I ended up doing is I ended up going on a program that is very much similar into what keto is about. So What is keto? So most of you know, keto is about getting your body into a state where it is burning ketones for fuel rather than using glycogen, right? Or the glucose glycogen being what I call a sugar burner. Our body prefers not to work very hard and loves to be efficient. Our body now, what happens is we eat our food and then 
our body draws out the glucose, the sugar that is in our foods and uses that as a form of energy. When you don't use up all of that energy that you've gotten from your food, right? all those glycogen, all that sugar, your insulin then raises your, because your blood sugar has raised, now your insulin level raises, and it gets it out of your system and stores it for later use, right? And so often that is stored as body fat because we can't have that sugar running around in our bloodstream. It needs to come out of the bloodstream and that's what insulin's job is, to move it out of the bloodstream. So then when you get into a ketosis state, what ends up happening is you drop your carbs low enough that now your body doesn't have that glucose, but instead learns to convert fat through the liver into ketones, and that is what you use for energy. So when you're going longer periods of time, if you've heard of intermittent fasting, what ends up happening is your body goes into its fat stores because now it knows how to use fat as energy, right? Because it's efficient. It likes, obviously, it wants to stay alive. So it does what it needs to do to do that. And so those are the two differences and why ketosis and the ketogenic way of eating tends to help people drop fat is because now we've turned ourselves into being fat adapted and that being what our body uses for energy. Okay, so that is ideally what we want. Now, there are several ways that people go about doing this. And my way of going about doing this was dropping my carbs low. And I and let me clarify this. Keto is any amount of carbs that gets your body into a state of ketosis to burn fat for energy. It can be different for each person. So normally it's 50 usable carbs and under. You will also see people recommend 20 carbs. And that may be one of the things that uh, sets me apart in that I believe in showing up for your body the way she needs you to show up. Really intuitively understanding what that looks like for you. Not necessarily just going along with what everybody else is doing. Really showing up for yourself in a way that you are empowered, intuitively listening and educated and making the best decision for your body individually. And so what I did is went extremely low carb. And actually what I ended up experiencing was I was in the worst shape of my life. And I had gone from running 10 miles. I still couldn't lose all my weight. I was frustrated because it wouldn't budge. But for the most part, I was healthy, right? My numbers were all good. I could keep up with everything going on. I was a little tired. I needed to take my naps during the day. But I mean, come on, who doesn't when you have young kids, right? But what I found after I dropped this weight is I was miserable, literally no energy. I ended up having a cancer scare and going to the doctor and trying to find out what the heck is going on with my body, having to do MRIs, bone scans, like I was having to go through just so many tests. And I was in this place of just my body, my body was hurting like it had never hurt before. Pain, just aches. And I would just, I remember just keeping going back to my doctor and saying, what is going on with me? Here I am 70 pounds lighter. I'm supposed to be feeling better. I'm supposed to be experiencing feeling good and healthy. And I was experiencing quite the opposite. 
And I found myself having an autoimmune issue that my body began to even attack my own thyroid. So this is why I am so passionate about teaching you the correct way to do this, the correct way to, if your goal is to lose weight, to lose weight, but also be healthier. That is my most important goal for you, right? That should be our most important goal in anything that we do is that we end up better than we were, right? Better in our health, in the way that we feel, the way we experience life. These are the things, right? If you remember my story before, I went into wanting to lose the weight because of my confidence wasn't there, right? And so now it was the opposite of, okay, now I look a certain way, but that's not good enough. I want to feel good. And so that's why I'm so passionate about this. That's why if you would have talked to me two months ago, I would have told you, no, do not do keto. Because I saw far too many people doing it in a super extremely unhealthy way that actually ended up making my body functioning or lack thereof of functioning the way that it should. I mean, I basically wrecked my body and had to climb my way out. And, and if you've heard my story, you know that, okay, I was... I wanted to lose weight. And then when I did, and I had my friends asking me, what did you do? I was like, no, I don't want to tell you what I did. Because I don't want you to feel this miserable. And that's when I just threw myself in head first, both feet, trying to figure out what went wrong. How could I, sure, lose weight, but also in a healthy sustainable way. That was the most important thing to me is that when my friends asked me, I didn't want to tell them, hey, go ahead and do this so that you can end up feeling like junk like I do. No, absolutely not. That was not in my integrity. That was not in who I am as a person to be able to tell somebody that in good conscious. And so that's why I was so against it. Until right? Here comes the until. Here comes when everything changed for me was a couple years. So fast forward now from that time, here I was getting ready to face turning 40. And then all of a sudden, this weight that I had figured out how to live a healthy life, what foods fueled my body, where I could be my best and strongest and healthiest and fight off disease and keep up with my kids and my busy life and all this energy, you know, and this good sleep and everything was great up until I started approaching 40. And then all of a sudden, what I was doing was no longer working. My hormones were wacky. I don't even know what happened, right? But if you're anywhere near me and in your 40s or getting close to or slightly after you know those hormones get a little wacky, right? And I just began to question like, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, everything that I was doing was not working. My weight started to creep back on. My body started to hurt again. And remember, I have an autoimmune. My autoimmune causes me to what I call zombie mode, and my Hashimoto's. And what my body does is it attacks my thyroid. So talk about having a low functioning thyroid. I'm a walking testament of what is possible when we show up for our bodies and really support her. But what I started to find when everything kind of went haywire right before turning 40, all this stuff that I had been working, doing, all of a sudden wasn't working. And I was hitting what I call that zombie mode of just being completely exhausted in that place again, where it was like, I don't want to feel this way. I have got to do something. So I started my research. I started looking into keto and I wanted to see how it affected 
women's hormones and how it affected gut health and how it affected our blood sugars and our hormones and all these functions within our body that affect our well-being, that affect how we lose weight, that affect how we sleep, that affect our moods, that affect how we process our foods and whether we store it or use it to our benefit or whether it's harming our digestive system because our digestive system is under so much stress in the world that we live in and it's not working the way that it ideally should be. And so I threw myself into studies and read the books and listened to the podcast and took the courses and really educated myself in how I could do this in a way that would support my body the way it needed to be supported. And I found it. And in doing so, my body effortlessly for the first time, I don't, in many, 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 ever, maybe, for the first time, my body released those 31 pounds. It was like, wow, okay, maybe I need to share this. Maybe I need to let other people know that yes, there is a right way to do keto. And this is what has worked for me. And so that's what I want to share with you. I am now thinner than I was on my wedding day in my 20s. And not only that, right, I feel amazing. I have the energy. I'm able to get a good night's sleep. I'm managing stress in my life, right? I don't feel overwhelmed. I have a clear understanding of what supports my body and a healthy res- a stress response. And I feel empowered. And that's what I want to share with you. That's why I am so passionate about teaching this in the right way. Because I don't want you to experience what I first experienced when I dropped the weight and what I see that saddens me is I see these advertising companies and they take advantage of us in that state of desperation where we just want something to work. I've done the pills, I've done the shakes, I've done the bars, you know, I've done all of that because I was taken advantage of in my most desperate state. And I want to draw a line in the sand and say, absolutely no more. This is just, we. Ca- why are we doing this to people, right? Why are we being taken advantage of? And there is a better way. And that's why I'm so passionate with you now is to share that better way. There is a better way. So moving forward, my intention is that you will have a firm understanding on how you can support your body to burn fat naturally, improve your gut health, because that is the key in all of my clients that I have worked with for the past 10 years. It has been improving gut health. And nutrition is a powerful tool in improving your gut health and restoring the vitality of your gut so that it does support the happy hormones that your body needs, so that it does support healthy digestion, so that your body functions and you get the vitamins and the nutrients you need. And so your body is functioning from an optimal place. The way that we do this and the way that we are most empowered is not through buying a shake. Because, let me tell you why. When we buy the shake, we think it's an, we want that instant, right? We want this instant gratification. Oh, you mean all I have to do is drink this shake and the weight is just going to come off with that same mentality with keto. Oh, you mean all I've got to do is eat low carbs and that weight's going to come off. I would like to reframe those thoughts for you and really educate you and empower you that not only do you know what foods to eat for the best support for your body. And that is the key, right? That bio-individuality, understanding your body 
tuning into your intuition, that inner wisdom of knowing, okay, these foods are probably best for me. These foods are not. Not stopping there. Because how often have we been on a our perfect plan or been on keto, right? I'm in some of these uh, keto groups. And I'll, I, I see a lot of these women just beating themselves up, right? Ask yourself, have you ever beaten yourself up because maybe you didn't stay on plan? You have a goal, you want to lose weight, but then what happens? Somewhere a little bit into it with my clients, it's usually about the five week mark, five to seven weeks. They had had experience with 20 pound weight loss. And then all of a sudden, they're self sabotaging They're They've reached what I call their upper limit in how good they want to feel. We don't always know how to feel that good. And that is why it's so important for this education, not only to understand what foods are, are best for you, but also understanding how do you shift your mindset? How do you get to a place that you sustain that lasting wellness? And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit more. So many of us are like I was and just desperate for something and willing to try anything. The problem is, is that too often that anything that we've tried has wrecked our bodies or created imbalances in our body, especially within our gut microbiome. And it's, it's an imbalance. And we don't know that. We don't know that that's what's happened. And we may have lost the weight, but then that same 20 pounds just keeps coming back. Or the weight that you so desperately want to keep off we fall back into old patterns or we stop that diet and then it comes back on. And so there's two problems that, that you might not be aware of. And that is the food that we eat is a powerful and can do two things. It can either lower inflammation or cause inflammation. And so inflammation is I mean, the easiest way to kind of describe it is if you've gotten a splinter in your finger and your body gets red in the area and it swells up a little bit to protect your body. And that's what inflammation is. It's, it, it is a response in your body to try to protect your body. However, when you're functioning in a chronic state of inflammation through stress, insulin resistance, overeating, eating the wrong foods, that's not a healthy place to be. And that inflammation, that chronic inflammation is what tends to lead to disease. And so if we can get our body into a state of lowering, or even removing that inflammation, then we tend to fight off disease rather than encourage it. And then once we've gotten into that place where we've balanced our gut health and we're lowering in the inflammation in our bodies, we can really start to have those feel-good hormones again. We have that vibrant energy, got the trimmer waistline. We're not hanging on to as much water, right? We're, our bodies are just functioning in a place of just that optimal wellness. And our bodies are these amazing machines. All we need to do is give it the right elements. And it can do the work for us. It doesn't have to be so hard. It doesn't have to be such a struggle. So let's now talk about keto, the solution that we might be able to use to help us bring our body back into optimal balance, into a place of wellness. And the Smart Keto Academy way, keto is not just about eat these foods, don't eat that food. Because once again, yes, that's education for you, you need to know that, but that's not enough. 
I take it one, two, three, four steps further, right? Because I want to empower you that you don't ever have to spend another dime on weight loss. And you don't have to go to school for four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years to figure this out. And so the Smart Keto Academy way is the four week foundation course that that I'm launching that is a, a an education for you to empower you to help you understand how your body works, and why the food you choose is so important, so that you can create a plan that works for you no matter where you're at in your life because you understand this and you understand how to make empowered choices that support your body functioning at that vibrant, healthy level. So in this four-week foundations course and Smart Keto Academy, it really is about teaching you the food the healthy food list, the recipes, the shopping guides, right? To really help you create a perfect plan. But it's more about understanding your own hormones. It's about centering in and creating awareness around your food choices and how they can best support you. And the most powerful missing piece that you don't find in other programs is the mastering of your mindset and uncovering those self-limiting beliefs that, okay, you've started the program, you lost some weight, and then all of a sudden the self-sabotaging starts to take place. And I want you to think about your own experience. How many times has that happened to you? How many times have you lost weight or gotten maybe 10 pounds, 20 pounds off, and then we go back and put that weight back on, right? That self-sabotaging behavior. And And the missing piece is that mastering of your mindset, uncovering what story that you have stored that is causing this self limiting behavior. And while today we're going to focus on the food portion, I am going to cover a little bit about what that looks like, just so you have an awareness and can start practicing that right away. Because the food piece is important, yes, but you've really got to be able to show up because how many of us do something, we're really excited and we follow it through and then we lose excitement and don't follow through. Okay. And so yeah, the food part is important. You need to know how to eat the right way to the healthy, most sustainable way. But also, how do you keep going and making those healthy choices when life gets in the way and you really don't feel like it, right? When your friend and partner, the saboteur, that's what I like to call my husband because he likes all the goodies and he likes to sabotage my weight loss efforts. And I love him to pieces, but he's really good at trying to do that. He's gotten better, but he is my saboteur and we usually have them in our lives and they come from good places. But how do you continue to show up for you even when that happens or when life feels extra stressful and busy? How do you make it work in your life? And that all comes from that solid discovering of what your self-limiting beliefs are and practicing letting them go. And that's what we do cover in more depth and detail within Smart Keto Academy. And so let's really though, let's focus on today, what foods are your healthier choices? Let's start with a couple different topics I want to cover. We have what foods are the healthier choices? how to create a healthier keto plate, what foods you should avoid, and what practice is especially important for women that are following the ketogenic way of eating. So the first one, what foods are your healthier choices? Any time that you can choose organic, very little processed, if at all processed, right? So whole food, 
So a piece of broccoli is broccoli. A piece of chicken is chicken. But if you have to open something out of a package or open something out of a box, that is not going to be your healthiest option. Your healthiest option is going to be straight from the earth, straight from how God created it. And so when you can just try to imagine that in the simplest way possible, that's really what it's about. It's returning to a more simple way of doing things. And so your healthiest food choices are going to be food in their natural state. When you do your grocery shopping, don't go down the center aisle, stay on the outside of the grocery store. Stay within the produce section, um, fresh section, um, frozen section even, right? And just really trying to focus on that food in a natural state. The food choices when it comes to proteins, um, you're going to want to choose. So if it is an animal product, you are going to want to look for grass-fed, natural, organic, Stay away from as much as you can the factory farm raised and know that food is energy and that energy is carried into foods and there is so much suffering within those factory farms and for not only the animals but for the people as well and how they affect those around them, right? The water quality, the air quality, the land quality, and so on and so forth. So the more you can choose that grass fed, organic, wild caught is going to be your best and really just pay attention to that when you go to the stores, it will say wild caught albacore tuna, it will rather than farm raised, right? And you can really see the distinct difference when you start looking. So make a note for yourself when you go grocery shopping the next time, really look for the difference and start just being mindful, mindful of your food choices. The next one is how to create a healthier keto plate. So ideally, as a health coach, I'm thinking of your health and wellness. So the what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of the healthiest type foods? Chances are it's vegetables, right? We want to fill our plate with as much green, leafy, fibrous, nutrient dense foods we can think of. And so often I see people doing keto in this meat and cheese, and the meat is processed, it's full of trans fats that creates all of this inflammation in our bodies. They're choosing cheese that is not the healthiest made, right, with all kinds of additives and chemicals and not healthy. And those two items create inflammation in our bodies. And so we want to create a more alkaline state within our body. And that happens through green leafy vegetables. And if you can think of green leafy vegetables, they're going in and they're cleaning your blood and and creating more oxygen rich atmosphere for your body. And so really choosing those green leafies, fibrous green like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and asparagus and not being afraid of the carbs that are found within those vegetables. Too often I see people skipping vegetables because they're afraid of them. And yes, there are vegetables that are higher in carbohydrate count that you will have to be mindful of when you're creating a plan for yourself to stay or to get and stay into ketosis. And I do that for you with the Smart Keto Academy, you have all of that laid out for you. But just knowing that if you stick with green veggies, fibrous, whole vegetables, you will likely be okay. And you may have to do some research, you may have to learn, if you choose to do it on your own, 
you may have to figure out what are the carb contents, how do you subtract the carbohydrate count from the fiber to get your usable carbs, right? And you may have to do some math and figuring that out if you choose to do it on your own, which it's possible. And so then you would start with the vegetables on your plate. Then you're going to add the healthy fats. And I did a class entirely on healthy fats, which is going to help you lower the inflammations, going to help you feel satiated. Um, Some fats, the MCTs, are actually going to be used by your body more efficiently in a quicker manner to turn into ketones for your body. The healthy fats are going to be things like your nuts and seeds and avocado, virgin, extra virgin, olive oil, um, d- coconut oil. You know, you've heard of the uh, Bulletproof coffee, right? Where you, for me, I don't drink coffee. I use a coffee replacer, but I start with a scoop of coconut oil in my uh, replacer And it does a couple of things. It allows me to intermittent fast comfortably. It gives me that higher dose of fat that I need. And so starting then, you've got your green leafies that needs to be the highest content. And then your healthy fats needs to be then also the next portion, and then we're going to be going into moderate protein. A lot of times people find themselves into trouble because they're and pull themselves out of ketosis because they're eating too much protein. Protein can be found in the form of animal products, but also can be vegetarian sources. And if you are vegetarian or are vegan, it can be done. It just needs you need a lot more intention, you need a lot more awareness and a lot more planning, but it absolutely can be done. And so I don't discourage you. If you are a vegan, then you can do it. It's just a matter of mapping out your plan and figuring out those numbers and applying that. Now, if you do want support in that, the the Smart Keto Academy will teach you and actually does have the recipes that can all be made vegan friendly. So that's your keto plate. That's what a healthy keto plate looks like. Imagine one half vegetables, a quarter, if not a little more of fat with just a smaller portion of protein. So what it is, is it's High fat, moderate protein is the way that the ketogenic planet works. What foods to avoid? So I've covered that a little bit. Your, what foods to avoid are going to be those factory farm raised meats, the products that have been sprayed with chemicals, uh, anything that really comes out of a bag or anything you have to open up, you are going to likely want to avoid. And vegetable oils that are in a plastic container are usually trans fats, hydrogenated oils, GMO oils that are absolutely no good for you. You need to stay away from those. They create high inflammation in your bodies and they're cheap for a reason. The oil sources that you should be using are going to be your coconut and then the extra virgin olive and then avocado oil as well as new on the market, which is amazing. There's some really great products out there. And when you purchase your oils, you're going to want, like if you get an avocado oil or an extra virgin olive oil, getting them in stainless steel or a dark glass is going to be beneficial because it protects the quality of the oil. And as I said, anything just to avoid anything that is coming in a box, anything that is prepackaged, really just turning back to natural whole foods. And I don't mean the grocery store, I mean just the natural food, the way that it came from the earth. And 
Oftentimes what I hear from my clients is I just don't have time to cook or I don't know what to cook. And so I have included in that Smart Keto Academy, that's the thing that I teach you. This is what I work with my clients is to teach them how meal prep can be easy, that it doesn't need to be an all day chore. And it isn't like you have to cook every single night of the week. I don't cook every night of the week. I eat fresh whole foods every night of the week, but I don't cook every night because I don't have time for that. So I teach you those really simple, easy ways that we can do that because it is possible. And it's about just setting that intention and knowing what you want. Really asking yourself, is this healthy? Intuitively, we know a lot. When we slow down and when we ask ourselves and we look at what we're doing, most of the time we know whether something is good for us or not. And this is something that we can do with practice. Now, there is one missing ingredient that I did not share that should be a part of, in my opinion, every single person's plan. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about the times that you have lost weight, right? Most of the time we can lose weight, right? Or maybe like me, you had tried everything and the weight wasn't budging. Eventually, I found what works and I lost the weight, right? But what happens is we gain that weight back. And most diets that you choose in one way or another eventually work. But there is a missing ingredient in all of them. And that is the mindset piece. That piece, that missing ingredient is really turning into you and uncovering those self-limiting beliefs so that weight is no longer a struggle, right? Because you're out of that place of disempowerment. You're in that place of self-awareness and belief and understanding, and you're intentional about your actions, and you've mastered your mindset. You've mastered your relationship with food and your relationship with emotions so that you do continually choose the foods that are best for your body. And so that missing ingredient really is about uncovering your beliefs that keep you stuck. Because no matter how many times you lose 20 pounds or 10 pounds, if we haven't uncovered those self-limiting beliefs, we tend to use coping mechanisms, right? We use food maybe to numb us out from the stress. We use food to numb us out from boredom. We use food to numb us out from um, anxious feelings. And until you can really uncover what those self-limiting beliefs you have are, we're going to tend to turn back to that behavior, And until we can really master our mindset and create the feelings that we want to feel, chances are it's going to still be a struggle. And so in in my programs, they're built on four pillars and what I call the sweet spot. You've got to have these four pieces. And if any of them are missing, you will likely fall back into old pattern behaviors. And so today I gave you a little bit of the piece of clarity. So clarity is understanding exactly what is right for your individual body, understanding what foods are truly going to support your wellness. The three other pillars are going to be personal belief. A belief that you can, in fact, do this and you can, in fact, keep this weight off, 
right? Having that belief in yourself is part of mastering that mindset. And then having accountability in place and support in place that this is really the only piece that is a part of all programs that actually work. And that is going to be that accountability and support. Somebody to help us when life gets in the way, somebody to encourage us, somebody to keep us going, somebody to streamline your efforts. So you're not wasting a lot of time trying to figure it out, but instead have a clear mapped out plan to get to your goals. That's what having a coach does. That's what having a program like Smart Keto Academy will do for you is really help you get that clarity that you know what works. Form that personal belief, master your mindset and your thoughts. Keep that accountability in place so that the final piece is the consistency. Because no matter what you do, if you stop doing what works, it's no longer going to work, right? If you personalized your plan and found the perfect plan, right? So we have created the perfect plan together. You know what you need to do and you do it and you release the weight that you want to release. If you don't consistently make those choices, you're going to fall back into those old habits and you are going to gain the weight back, right? There is no if, ands, or buts about it. If you go back into old habits of overeating, eating the ice cream and eating the chips and and overeating on a regular basis, you will likely gain that weight back. And so the consistency piece is extremely important. But you can get there when you've mastered your mindset, when you've mastered your thoughts and your personal belief in something, you can get there and it can be a sustainable lifestyle because you're not going to go back to the way you did things, right? So you don't have to spend hours figuring this out or like me, years, right? And ridiculously thousands and thousands of dollars, right? I was just so super passionate, I needed to know and I just kept going. But you don't have to do that. You can have clarity around what to eat and the what best supports your body and the accountability and taking that consistent action towards supporting your best self. I will soon be opening the doors for Smart Keto Academy. And it's it's a course that you will be able to just streamline your efforts and really receive that clarity so that you don't have to spend hours figuring it out so that you can learn what healthy feels and looks like. The wait list is now open and priority registration will open for the, our four weeks foundations course that it's all module or it's all online, it's all digital, you'll have supporting videos, you'll have PDF downloads and fun sheets to really help you stay on plan and learn. And then also coaching, coaching to help you get past your limiting beliefs, help you get past those blocks, I will show up for you. And we will really get past what is in your way really work on uncovering those blocks. You can get on the list and receive a free five day keto guide at missjenlewis.com forward slash waitlist. That's M-S-J-E-N-L-E-W-I-S dot com waitlist. So don't delay. Don't wait because that five day guide will soon be gone. So make sure that you get on the wait list, you don't miss priority registration, that you don't miss the bonus class that I have planned, which is all about you understanding your hormones as a woman, and how that affects your ability to lose weight, how it affects our ability um, for our body to function the way that they're supposed to, 
and really just help you understand on a deeper level. So you are empowered. I always say the best investment that you can ever make is going to be in you in your education to understand, because nobody can take that away from you, right? The shake may run out, the pill may go away. But your education and your brain is the most powerful thing you have, because you can consciously make choices that support your greatest self, your most divine potential. And that is what I am here for you to do is to really just help you show up passionately, purposefully, intentionally to co create what you are meant to co create here in your best self. So, blessings to health and happiness, and we will see you next time. Hey, one more thing before you go. I want to invite you to a free masterclass I created called Keto Done Right. I will teach you the smart and strategic way to go keto so you can end sugar cravings, restore gut health, boost your metabolism, and create healthy, happy hormones. Go to MissJenLewis.com forward slash keto and get it before it's gone. I'll see you in there. Just a reminder, Smart Keto Academy is a branch of Jennifer Lewis International. And the statements in this podcast have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, nor are they intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. In fact, if you have a chronic illness, we do recommend that you work closely with your physician before making any changes whatsoever to your wellness plan. Results are not typical and weight loss is not guaranteed, but you are not the typical person now, are you? So now go have an amazing day.